Instant Monsters presents Foam Latex Application. Part 1. Application. There are several materials that you're going to need to complete this makeup. For the application stage, you will need astringent and cotton balls, a foam latex prosthetic, such as those available on our website at instantmonsters.com, prosthetic adhesive, cotton swabs or inexpensive paint brushes, 99% rubbing alcohol, thickened adhesive or eyelash adhesive, a small spatula, latex makeup sponges, and loose color-free powder with a large powder puff. Our model today will be Mike Shaw. Hello? Begin by cleaning your skin with some astringent on a cotton swab. This will remove any oils, dirt, and other impurities, giving you a clean surface to work on. It's a good idea to cover yourself with a makeup cape in case of drips. The glues and makeup we're going to use will ruin your clothes. I like using cheap plastic shampoo capes from beauty supply stores. They're made to be waterproof, so you know they'll catch everything. Since this is a generic prosthetic, the first thing you should do is hold it against your face to check the fit. You may need to shift or stretch it slightly to make it fit your face. Foam latex is very stretchy, so you'll have a lot of flexibility. Pour a small amount of prosthetic adhesive into a disposable cup. This way you don't risk spilling the entire bottle if you knock it over. Begin applying a thin layer adhesive in the central area, in this case the nose and inner eyes. The glue I'm using is available on our website. It's an acrylic based contact adhesive that goes on white but dries clear. It stays sticky after it's dried so be careful not to bump into it. Press the prosthetic gently in place. At this point it can still be pulled back up and repositioned if you need to. Take your time and get the position just right. Once the placement is good, press the prosthetic in place more firmly to fully adhere it. Once the center is glued down, begin working outward from that point. Don't glue the edges yet, we'll save those for last. Make sure you cover every bit of your skin in adhesive for the best possible movement. Working from the center outward allows you to shift the prosthetic around as you work to get the best fit. If you glue one side down completely before moving to the other side, you may end up with a crooked prosthetic. You can apply the glue with cotton swabs or with cheap paint brushes as shown here. I'm using a flat brush for more coverage, switching to a pointed brush to get into hard to reach areas. Because this is a contact adhesive, you can get an even stronger bond by painting your skin and the inside of the prosthetic, then letting both dry before pressing them together. This can be overkill unless you plan to wear the prosthetic all day, but it can be a useful trick in high movement areas like around the mouth. In the case of a prosthetic that covers your neck, it's important to look straight forward as you glue it down so that it will sit properly. Resist the urge to tilt your chin up as you glue. It might make things a little easier to see, but that part of the prosthetic won't fit right when you look forward again. Once the bulk of the prosthetic is glued down, it's time to move on to the edges. You can use your fingers to lift the edges or tweezers if you have a hard time grabbing the thin foam latex. Apply adhesive under the lifted edge, then press the edge down once it's dry, either with your finger or by rolling the handle of a glue brush. If any edges fold under or don't lie down properly, you can re-liquify the adhesive by using a small brush to work some 99% alcohol under the edge. While the glue is wet again, you can adjust the edge as needed to make it lay down properly. This prosthetic isn't sitting quite perfectly on Mike's mouth, so I had to tear away a small portion from the left side. This created a thicker edge that I'm going to have to fix later. Once the prosthetic is glued down, powder any exposed adhesive to eliminate the stickiness by using loose powder and a powder puff. Once all the edges are glued down and powdered, it's time to blend them into the skin. You have two options for this. The first is to dab a little adhesive around the edge with a torn piece of makeup sponge or cotton swab. The other option, as seen here, is to use a mix of spirit gum and rubbing alcohol. 
This mixture soaks into the thin edges of the prosthetic, making them virtually disappear into the skin. Once the edges are blended, you want to seal the entire prosthetic with a layer of adhesive. When all of the glue is dried, apply a heavy coat of powder to eliminate the stickiness. The powder will also help you spot any thicker edges that still need blending. These edges can be filled in with either eyelash adhesive or thickened prosthetic adhesive and a small spatula. This is how I fixed the area that I had to tear away from Mike's mouth. When the edges are fully blended, give them a final powdering. The prosthetic is now applied and blended into the skin. In part two of this tutorial, we'll cover painting the prosthetic.